we were talking earlier today about how you know how there's always areas in a school where there are things that you want to be celebrated and I guess that they're not yeah. um, you know there's always going to be those projects that you're working on or that you know a faculty member is working on and no one else knows about them um, and I think that's something that we wanted to talk about today you had a really good example of one yeah I mean one of the things you run into a problem at UMW but anyone out there is in higher ed is that you have great stuff being done with all the social media, but how do you kind of capture it? Right. And that's been for us kind of one of the things that UMD Blogs, our blogging, publishing platform, whatever you want to call it, has done is it allows us to actually set up aggregation spots mm -hmm. that students can self-service. I wrote a blog post about this, um, and if you bring it up, I wrote a post about this back in January. No, it was June, April of 2010, and it was called UMW Study Abroad Blogs, A Case in Aggregated Self-Service using the ATM, you see that back here, using the ATM as kind of the early model self-service money, right? Well, one of the things we did on this study abroad blog back in January of 2010 as an experiment is we just put a little kind of link space in the sidebars, talked about what the site was, and said, if you are using a UMW blog and blogging your study abroad, drop off your URL. Right. Well, within about three or four weeks, we had 10 people do it mm -hmm. just in the spring of 2010. And over the next course of year, and we had like 200 posts written in one, one you right. know, semester. Over the next year, we've had another 500 posts written, another 15 to 25 blog, actually it's, if there was 10 there, there was another 15 blogs added just this year. Mm -hmm. And we just were looking at study abroad blogs today, and if we go there, check it out, you know, the study abroad blogs actually have 700 posts from all over the world, mm -hmm. right? And this is how simple the whole model is. If you look right here, it's about the site, but here's that little space I was talking about. You just add your link, uh -huh. right? Right here, you put it up here, you add your link and there's a password built in, and anyone with a blog, whether it's a UMW blog, a WordPress.com blog, a blogger blog, it doesn't matter. They drop it off and we syndicate it right in. This has been amazing, not just because it's cool to think of self-service blog aggregation, mm -hmm. right? But it's also cool because we start to see those things and celebrate those things that we've never seen before. And right. I've been knocking on the door of, of uh, international studies or study abroad and basically saying, look, you have this unbelievable resource right. with these students who are doing it and it's not packaged. Like, oh, I'm blogging for school, so I need to make it kind of geeky and stupid, right? Well, I mean, you're wow. talking They're about because they want it. Was this an initiative from? I mean, obviously, WordPress, UMW blogs. You've got a large history with Mary Washington. Yeah. But when you say you've got like 500 blog posts, like just right off the bat, like that, is that an initiative that was happening from the faculty? I mean, was there an initiative to say we want our students to be blogging when they go abroad? Okay, or is that something that you it's pushed? Two things. How did that? It's not something. I think it's a, a bit of everything. Uh huh. One of the things that happened is they started this experiential learning. And experiential learning at UMW basically gives you one credit if you share out your experience. And what happened is people found that blogging was an easy way to do it, sure. and an easy way to get credit. So we had some students do it, but we have a whole other group of students who are doing it because they want to keep let their family be in touch okay. with them and see their pictures and have a sense of what they're doing abroad. Yeah. So they become these little kind of family sites. Mm -hmm. But if they share it publicly, which most of them want to, they actually have the ability to let other people see it and also be kind of a promoter of what's happening around the campus. Yeah. And then you have students like some of the students I've had at DS106. Uh, Gail Larkin is a perfect example. She went over to Australia and then went to Japan and traveled over. And she's been kind of like treating it as like really a travel blog yeah. and talking about her travels and thinking about them in depth and talking about the difference in kind of approach to schooling in Australia mm -hmm. versus the U.S. and it's just a very thoughtful blog. Well and the beautiful thing about it is that you can treat it for yourself as a scrapbook. You can put all your stuff in there but yeah. because it's open it's not just your personal scrapbook. It's something that other people can find value in you know, <clears throat> maybe I'm about to travel abroad, maybe I'm about to go to Italy and I start doing that Google search right. and saying, you know, what what can I find there? And then I find something that you, you were just documenting for yourself or for your family, but for me, I'm getting real value at it from a tourist aspect, you know, from, you know, a learning aspect, engagement. And also it's like, you know, people talk about study abroad as this, this kind of vague thing that you really can't know what's happening. You've sure. got to go to experience it. Well, mm -hmm. that's probably true to some degree. You can't experience <laughs> the culture if you're not there, but Right. You can certainly get a good idea of what these students are doing.
-hmm. and what's cool and you know get recommendations and just get a sense like let me just show you some of these blogs yeah, show me like, some examples absolutely i would love to Tim. thank you jim okay. <laughs> um you know i was actually planning on that so oh, you, you know this is a perfect segue uh dtlt today in case yeah. you didn't know mm -hmm. Episode four? It's four. Yep. Wow. You missed yesterday. You missed the whole damn weekend. <laughs> I, I'm just saying. there was, just, there was. It's kind of like should be episode five. Yeah. Theoretically. Maybe. All right. We anyway, should, let's move on. Yeah. Right. Time's away. Limited time. <laughs> yes. Anyway, here's a good example. This is by um, a student by the name of Bobby Tillett, I believe. Okay. And he's actually studying abroad in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And one of the classes he's taking is Thailand and the sex industry. And so what he went with his class, they went around Thailand and they took pictures of some of the classic sex industry spaces, like right. this one super pussy, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah. like, and he's going there and like he gave the disclaimer at the beginning, like, hey, look, we're not engaging in any of the sure. sex industry. But he's actually studying it and thinking about it. And there's mm -hmm. all these NGOs that are trying to protect these. And, you know, it is. It's an absolutely devastating industry right. for many of the people in Thailand. And, you know, this is a thoughtful blog mm -hmm. for a class he's taking in Thailand where he's going around on these field trips to look at, okay, what's the real space yeah. that's happening with it's, it? It's putting online that raw experience. That's what people want you to experience when they say yeah. you've got to go there to understand. But that's putting that online and it's saying, you know, yeah. I'm right here downtown in the streets. These are pictures that I took of what's going on right here. And then other people can experience that for themselves. Yeah, and, and it's like it's beyond tourism. It's a kind of intellectual pursuit into what's exactly. happening. But the whole thing is premised on this sexual tourism. Right. So it's kind of he's going there as both a scholar, a student, and a tourist. Right. So there's this weird kind of he's also part of the issue. So mm -hmm. and he talks about this in his blog rather thoughtfully. So it's it's a great blog. Another one that's interesting is um, Carol Dine has been in Spain and she's spending the summer in Spain and she's actually what I really like about Carol's blogging is she's extensive. She talks about everything she did every day, but she takes pictures, extensive pictures of the people she was with, yeah. things she was doing. I mean, I just love the way she's documenting this as a photo history right. of her site. And like you said, it becomes that archive. Yeah. And it becomes a crucial archive. But she also stops and talks about Spanish proverbs, as you can see here. I mean, there's some really cool things she does and shares out. She also talks about the experience of her speaking Spanish in Spain mm -hmm. and how she's a lot more kind of fluent than she thought she was yeah. and how this kind of trip abroad really brought that home, mm -hmm. which I thought was awesome. That's what that's about. Yeah. So another cool one, and this is Go, U, uh, Go UMW. Um, this is a student who's just getting on her feet. Her name is Michelle, and she's just getting on her feet to go to Ukraine. And she's actually a Fulbright She's on a Fulbright, Fulbright fellowship. Scholar. Yeah, so yeah. she's a scholar at Fulbright. And she's actually going over to Ukraine to study the effects of the Chernobyl kind of major nuclear kind of meltdown right. on children. Uh -huh. And so that's what she's going there to wow. study. And she says here, and I think this is brilliant, and for me this kind of sells study abroad blogs more than anything can. And I'm going to read her about page. Do you mind? Please. Can I read it? You may. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Welcome to my blog about my adventures over the next year as I study in Kiev, which I learned is not Kiev, but from reading her blog, it's not pronounced Kiev. It's, it's Kiev. Kiev. Okay. So you know. I learned something too. Ukraine. Mm -hmm. um, for those of you who don't know, I will be there because I earned a Fulbright grant in political science to study Ukrainian health care policy mm -hmm. in relation to Chernobyl-affected children, which I think is fascinating. While I do plan to write about my research, I mainly hope to use this blog to detail my travels, adventures, funny or not so funny moments, and everything else in between. Right. And this goes, and I, you know, this is not rehearsed. Yeah. She, did this, she did this on her own. But this goes to the very heart of what UMW blogs or any publishing platform should be. It mm -hmm. should be the interstitial spaces between the research. Right. It should be that and more. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of amazing to see that this is happening whether we like it or not. And we're just not being thoughtful enough about aggregating it and promoting it. Well, yeah, and that's what I was going to say. I mean, it's not just about, okay, so they're doing these blogs on their own, but there's a real opportunity there for people like you and I to go to the professors and say, we know you're about to go on this trip. 
Yeah. We not only want you to blog, but here's some ways that you can capture video footage. Here's some ways that we can stream you live. We can get you on yeah. a radio station. Bring I your mean, smartphone. This opens up a whole yeah. thing. I mean, yeah, smartphones and the internet open up a whole new avenue for us to really get live, real-time feedback from yeah. what they're experiencing overseas. And I've been trying to get Gail Larkin on DS106 Radio. Right. So she's over in Australia. She was in, just in Japan. And she's great. I'm a big fan of hers. But, you know, she doesn't want to leave. Like, she writes extensively about her relationship. She found a boyfriend there. And it's funny, her and her family have this whole back and forth in the comments. Mm -hmm. And I actually co-signed her experiential learning contract so that I'm kind of looking over and giving her feedback on that process. So right. I'm kind of a part of it for that credit she gets. But it's cool because that gets to the whole point that Michelle talked about in her blog about Ukraine. It's like, it's not about, okay, here's my study, here's my research, here's my study, that's it. It's about, here's this unbelievable experience I'm having in this place. And one of the shame, a shame of that is, is that we're not promoting it enough. We're kind of capturing it and more people feeding back into that loop, which is a strong one. But also it's like, we should be doing more of that here yeah. at UMW in Fredericksburg, because the same thing's happening here. Yeah. And I understand that the exoticism of being somewhere else kind of, you know, trumps that. But, mm -hmm. you know, we need to kind of understand where that's happening in what departments, on what blogs, and start aggregating that so we have these points of light in UMW blog that reflect right. what's happening in a department, amongst a group of students, clubs, you name it, because it, it's so much activity is happening mm -hmm. there. I mean, we had 3.5 million visits last year. Yeah. I mean, that's insane. And like, we see what's happening here. And I think for another show, we might not have time in this show, but for another show, we should probably highlight what it means that UMW.edu so our main website right. is going over to WordPress. Mm -hmm. And what that could mean in addition for a lot of these programs and departments and stuff to start aggregating and doing the stuff as they see it happening. Because, you know, we can try and be like, we know what's happening where the eyes and ears of the institution, like Carl in the Breakfast Club, like right. I am the eyes and ears of this institution, but we're not. Yeah. You can only do it if everybody knows and everybody has a sense of what's happening in their space and is able to share it in some common space we can all see mm -hmm. and then comment upon. Yeah. You know, to me, it's not a crisis of publishing or a crisis of access because those are both easy and people are using them. Right. It's a crisis of vision, almost, um, not visual, but being seen. So yeah. in some ways visual, but it's a crisis of knowing or being seen or letting other people know that you're doing this. Yeah. And technologically, it's not hard, you know, it's not like you've got to set up this whole system with WordPress multi-site, you yeah. know, you could be feeding in from anywhere. You anywhere. Know, they, they could get their own posterous account or their own Tumblr blog, yeah. and then you just say, post your stuff, I'll feed it into that one site. It's a simple plug-in that runs on your, your website, feed WordPress, and then it all pulls in there. And so that opens it up to not being just your sequestered space, but saying, what are all of you out there doing, not just at this school, but maybe yeah. on your network? You know, Absolutely. and things like that. And that was, I mean, I think you bring up a great point. And that's kind of like what we had at UMW and many other people beyond UBC, CUNY, uh, Baruch, um, Academic Commons, um, with the Graduate Center. A lot of other schools have done this. And this idea of opening up aggregation so that it's not like use UMW blogs for your out. Right. I don't care what you use. Yeah. You know, let it be completely platform agnostic in terms of blogging platforms, mm -hmm. publishing spaces, Drupal, it doesn't matter. Just make sure it has a feed. Yeah. And then we've even made it so simple that when they drop off their feed, it doesn't have to be anything but the URL. Yeah, just putting so your website address in. don't even have to know what an RSS feed is, uh -huh. really. Just knock that in. And we, what I think we need to do with this, and this is next steps, is we need to kind of make the study abroad blog a model. Yeah. for how it visually could look. Because if you look at it visually right now, you know, it's pretty much, right now I kept it 2010 yeah. because we're thinking about it. But I think we need to think something about like what we did with DS106. Mm -hmm. Every student has an identity on the site. Um, they have a space where we can go through it quickly, see a visual, see an avatar of them, but also maybe get some images they've included. But just kind of design it so that you get that sense when you go to it, it's inviting. And you let right. them know which country is being reflected, who's talking about what. You know, maybe offer another alternative like a map. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot we could do with this, and I think it's a great model for how we might start approaching departments 
and them aggregating their space. Well, and this is really exciting stuff. And I mean, this is the reason that we decided to start doing DTLT today was we knew there was exciting stuff happening here yeah. on campus, here in Fredericksburg, and we wanted to push that stuff to the forefront, not just the things that are happening nationwide and in the world, That's right. but the things that are happening right here. So this That's is right. exciting. Our little patch of Mississippi we want to talk about. There you about. go. <laughs> right. Well, we got two seconds left. All right. Take it easy. Bye-bye. Thank you.